Hi, this is Karen from Montevilla Sewing. Today we're going to talk about some of the stitches that the Viking Enrolled 116 can do. So first of all, we want to talk about the straight stitch, which is the reason why most people buy a sewing machine is so they can do straight stitching. Put my glasses on here so I can see what I'm doing. Now for straight stitching, you want to have your stitch width dial at five, your stitch selector at one, which shows you this right up here, and your stitch length between two and three. And that's for most normal stitching. You can always vary these if you want to, but if you want to get, for instance, a 5 8 inch seam allowance, you'd want to have those settings in place. Now, to get a 5 8 inch seam allowance, we put our edge of our fabric right on that 5 8 inch line, like that. Here, I can start a little closer to the end. Okay. And when you start sewing, hang on to the thread tails for the first couple stitches. Then if you want to put a back stitch in, push this all the way down, back stitch a little bit, making sure you don't stitch off the edge of the, your fabric. And then just follow where you're watching the edge of your fabric in relation to that line. When you get to the end, a bit of a back stitch and just happen to stop in the neutral position. And there is our nice straight seam line. That's how you stitch straight. And that's assuming you have cut your, the edge of your fabric straight. Okay, so that's basic stitching on stitch number one. Now if you wanted to do a zigzag, you can do a zigzag by turning this to two. That immediately puts it into zigzag. There are different applications for zigzag. One of them is to use to finish the edge of your fabric so it doesn't continue to fray. You can also use zigzag for um, decorative stitching too. So I'm going to show you a little bit about zigzag and how you can change it by using the width and the length knob. So with zigzag you can do a back stitch if you want to help seal the beginning at the end of the seam. If you want to take a look at what your zigzag looks like, but you don't want to lose your place, roll the hand wheel until the needle is down in the fabric. Turn your fabric to the side and you can take a look at see what your stitches look like. So before we change either the stitch length, width or the selector, we want to make sure that needle's up out of the fabric. I'm going to just make this narrower and that moved the needle a little bit. So I'm going to stitch a little bit narrower and you can see now it's a narrower stitch. Okay, I'm going to go back the other direction and I'm going to show you and see how I turned the corner with the needle down. It's a really good way to do that. But I'm going to make a little bit of a change. I'm going to go down here to one and we're going to see what that stitch looks like. And then with the needle up, I'm going to put this all the way back up to five again. Okay, let me just take this out of here. So you can see how changing the length and the width, width and length, you can change your stitch and what it looks like. Okay, so um, another very useful, as I showed you with this, to make to uh, do your overcasting and you want to have your threads meet past the edge of the fabric. The problem is, is when you have a thin fabric that you do the zigzag on, you can have this little scrunching up happen. So we don't want to have that. In that case, you would want to use your overcasting foot, which is the J foot. Now when you zigzag across this J foot, the J foot has a little bar right there. You want to zigzag across that. Make sure you have this all the way on five. If you don't have it all the way on five, like say three, the needle could come across and hit that bar. So all the, ways, all the way on five when you use the J foot. So we're doing stitch number two, which is zigzag, and we're going to go back to 2.5. This time we're going to use some fairly thin fabric and I am lining up the edge of the fabric with a little bar on the foot. I'm going to take one stitch by hand, one stitch cycle, and you can see that the needle's going past the bar and back into the fabric. So as we sew, we're going to keep this so the fabric does not go past that bar. a little bit this side of it. 
but that will make sure that you get a true overcast. And you see how the stitches look a little bit loose? That's because they have had to go past that bar and back into the fabric. That makes this edge of the fabric stay nice and flat. That's the advantage of using the J foot. But again, make sure you have it on five. Okay, I'll take that back off. I'm gonna put this one back on. Whenever you're done stitching, whatever decorative stitch or utilitarian stitch you wanna make sure and put your stitches back to neutral. Um, Okay, so that was stitch number two. Stitch number three is a three-step zigzag, which can be useful for overcasting. It's not quite as efficient as the, the regular zigzag, but it can be done that way. It'll make a nice flat edge. This is also a good one. If you shorten your stitch length, you can use the three-step zigzag for mending. So a hole in some fabric and you can seal those edges really well that way. Four and five are your blind hem stitches. And that's another lesson for another time, but a blind hem is basically a hem that you can hardly see any stitches on the outside of the fabric. And if it's a thick fabric like fleece or a wool, sometimes you don't see those stitches at all, and it makes a really nice hem. Seven and eight are decorative stitches, as are most of the white stitches except for this first one. Now, to get to the white stitches, we change the length knob into this gray area. The plus and minus means you can make these stitches a little longer, or a little bit shorter if you want to. You don't have quite as much variation as you do in this area from zero to four, but you have some. The advantage of being able to do this stitch is you get a stretchy seam that's got three times as much thread in it. Really good for making the backs of arms, armholes or the back of a crotch seam, anywhere where there's a lot of need for stretch and strength of the seam. Okay, I'm gonna show you on my fabric here what it looks like when you make that stitch. So I'm gonna go slow. So it goes two forward, one back, two forward, one back. And of course you can lengthen it if you want to, but you don't really have to. Okay. Also, it makes a really nice decorative top stitch if you wanna have a bolder look to your stitching. Okay. The other stitches here are basically decorative. You notice the stitch number two does the same sort of back and forth motion as stitch number one. It just does it in a zigzag type pattern. Stitches that are decorative can also be useful. And here's an example. I use stitch number four to do the edges of this strap here. This strap is just a simple strip of uh, heavyweight denim that uh, would be hard to uh, make a seam and turn it inside out, right side out. So what I did is I just folded it in thirds and then I stitched from the right side and the stitch itself actually sealed the raw edge of this fabric. So that's a good way to use this. Okay, now one stitch we haven't mentioned yet is the buttonhole stitch. And the buttonhole stitch gives you a nice buttonhole like that. Normally you'd want to use the same color of thread as fabric, but for demonstration purposes, I'm showing you this way. There are two buttonhole feet. This one is for the manual buttonhole. It's a little bit more work involved, but it can be done, but you can make really nice long buttonholes. So just keep in mind a buttonhole is a hole in the fabric that's been bound at the edges. So if you have a buttonhole, six inches long, you're gonna have a really big hole in the fabric. So most of the time we wanna have smaller buttonholes, like maybe an inch or less. Okay, so this is the manual buttonhole foot. I'm gonna show you a quick demo of how this works. So uh, you hang on down here, push up here, and right up here is where you put the button that you want to, that, that will measure and give you the correct measurement of your buttonhole. Okay, and it seems you move this, you can see how these, this changes distance, so if I had a bigger button, it would make a bigger distance here. So to put that on, I like to slide it under like that, push it straight back there, and now we've got it on straight. The big part of the buttonhole foot sh should be in back and the small part in front. It is possible to put it on backwards, but it won't work and it'll break your needle. So you don't wanna do that. 
Okay, so my little trick for getting the thread right through there, since there's no slit anywhere, is you take just a single stitch. You don't have to hold onto any threads. Single stitch, make sure the take up lever is peeking up there and then pull your fabric out of there. And see that pulls your threads right into there. Really nice and easy. Now remember when I said when you first start sewing, good idea to hold onto the thread tails, just keep your finger on them. So in this case, I would say have your thread tails to the right. That's because as you're making your buttonhole, you would have the body of your garment over here to the left. So having them to the right keeps them out of the way. When you're making a buttonhole, you want to have at least three layers of fabric. I've seen nice dress shirts made this way, so they don't have to have interfacing, or two layers of fabric and some interfacing. And I'm going to put this up here. You can also push your presser foot up a little higher to give you a little more room. Put that down there. Now, we've got everything set this way, but we still need to make sure that our settings are correct. Over here on the stitch selector, remember, glance over here. Yes, needles up. Okay, we're gonna put this all the way over here to buttonhole. Remember, this needs to be at five, and that'll give you the, that's your standard width for buttonholes. Then we want to go over here to where it says buttonhole. By the way, you can't get into this area by moving past zero. You've gotta go past four. So we're gonna put that right in the middle. We've got these two guys here, but we need to see one more of those symbols, and that's right here on the buttonhole lever. That's hiding back here behind your needle threader. So you feel there, there it is. Pull that right down, make sure it's behind this little flange here. So you can see this little buttonhole marking, this one and this one. You should see three of those before you start making the buttonhole. Then we hang on to the thread tails, start sewing, and it's gonna start out making a bar tack at one end of the buttonhole. Then it knows how far to go back, where to stop, make the next bar tack, and start going forward. When you get to the end and you make a couple of stitches into that bar tack, just stop, because the machine will not automatically stop when it gets to the end of the buttonhole, so just stop when it's made a couple stitches that way. Lift this up, and uh, the thread tails you're gonna need to pull to the back and make a little knot in the back. And then you take your seam ripper, which is in your accessories, cut the uh, buttonhole, and you've got your buttonhole. So that's how that works. So we push this back up here, put this back to 2.5, that's your stitch length. Put this back to one, that's your stitch, and we've already got that there. To take this off, pull this straight forward like that, scoot it out like this, put this one back on, put your thread under here. And that's a rundown on some of the stitches that you can do on the Viking Emerald 116. Thanks for watching and check out some of our other videos.